This is Proverbs chapter 4, verse 8. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. When thou dost embrace her, she shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory. She, so like a crown of glory, shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakodash. I want to give double honors to our apostles and our elders, a great millstone that rule well. Peace and blessing and much salutation to you, elect Akiam, across the four winds of this earth, kicking this word in sincerity and in truth. I'm the brother Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas Camp, coming at you all with another lesson through the Spirit, Lord willing, it's edifying. I don't intend on it being on a, a, a long lesson, but um, something that's more so just straight, cut, dry to the point. You know, I just uh, was doing some meditating and um, conversed with uh, one of the beloved brothers in the camp, just going into wisdom, you know, and going into the things and monitoring the things that we, that we, um, how can I put this? that we allow into our lives and making sure that we're putting the Lord first, you know, making sure that we're reading more, make sure that we're reading, doing the things that we got to do. Like, you know, there's a, a saying that um, we would talk about often, uh, a few brothers and myself about a year ago, and we would pretty much um, say, and definitely have heard other brothers say this as well in different videos, in different, uh, in different ways and fashions. But, um, just making sure that um, there's things that you do in your life that might not be going off. But at the same time, if they're not expedient, it could be going off via example. You know, um, you can be doing things that are, aren't necessarily unlawful. But if you're if you're into it in a manner knowing that you should be into the scriptures more or studying more or doing lessons more. That can come to the point where you're entertaining that demon or whatever the case is, or you're giving that attention towards whatever it is toward the Lord. It can become like an idol. You know, it can become like an idol. You know, now um, the scripture that was just brought up in Proverbs, the fourth chapter, I write, exalt her. That's pertaining to wisdom. You know, which wisdom pretty much being the gift. All right. That portion of the spirit that the Lord puts on all of his elect. All right, his 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 little word or his idea that he had put in us, you know, that's what we're supposed to exalt or just the word in general, not even just in us. But the word is in us. But we also receive the word, whether it's to reform in the form of um teaching, you know, um, of course, learning from the elders, the apostles, the brothers, the different brothers that are in the camps, reading the scriptures or having conversation with one to another, you know, but. When you exalt wisdom, when you literally put wisdom, like Jahim said, put that woman first, Kihi, <laughs> joking. But anyway, when you put when you put wisdom first, when you exalt her, man, like you're gonna be promoted in a different fashion. When I say different fashion, you're gonna feel the essence of the Lord around you stronger. You're gonna feel the angels around you more. Hey, how was I even said, if thou confesseth me, you know, I will surely confess thee in front of my father. OK, so you will be promoted in the spirit and you will be blessed. OK, when you go into that word exalt. The word there is um, Salah and it says to lift up, it says to um, to esteem highly to be a prize to exalt oneself, you know. Now, there's times where you, you know, you might might have had a long day at work. Whatever the case is, you go home and you want to kick your feet up or do whatever the case is, you know, and a day might go by when you don't study and then two days go by when you don't study or whatever the case is, like you, you feel a lull in the spirit, you know, and it's because you ain't into your woman at the end of the day. You know, when you look at wisdom, when you look at wisdom, this this her right here, when you, when you look at wisdom. You know, and think of wisdom as being a woman as the scripture heavily promotes, not saying wisdom is an actual woman, but wisdom is likened to a woman for X amount of reasons. One of them being how we love our women like Jake loves a woman hard, very hard. You know, heard quite a few different brothers say this, you know, so if you put that same attention 
toward wisdom, only by default she'll love you back just as much, you know? And when you don't show your woman that attention that you know that she needs to get, she's going to grow a type of spitefulness towards you. You know, women love attention anyway. And if we understand the Lord compares women and likens it, I'm sorry, uses wisdom and likens it unto a woman. And he had given the woman that we deal with and that we see these different type of characteristics. He had to have a very idea of where he was going when he used wisdom as an example of a woman. Women love attention, you know, so if women love attention so much, you have to apply wisdom and by default use wisdom within the same manner because wisdom will leave you if you put more attention towards something else or you start to put her off side by side. You don't want to do that, you know, but being with wisdom and being involved within this word and being involved within this conversation whether if it's the highways, doing your lessons, being a brother as in conversation, whatever the case is, being heavy in the conversation, you will be exalted. All right. And it might not even be in the exact time that you want it to be, but you will still be exalted. It might not even be necessarily into the kingdom where we're all exalted. All right. Now, of course, you're going to be exalted within your daily life. But, hey, you know, you might not get the recognition that you might want or whatever the case is. Wisdom's going to exalt you in due time if you stay intact with her. If you exalt her, you will be promoted. She will bring thee to honor when thou doest embrace her, like when you embrace your woman. When you embrace your woman, you want to be into your woman. We need to be into wisdom like how we are into our women. Because the scriptures say right here, that you will be brought honor if you embrace her. Okay. It says she shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. That crown. And the more that you're into her. Satan will try to shake you up and shake that crown off of your head. Hey, Yahweh Shai even said make sure nobody taketh thy crown. But as, more, as much as you're entangled with this woman. That crown ain't going to get shooken off. But it's going to stay on your head. It's going to manifest when we receive the complete honor and praise in those new bodies when we receive power. It says, a crown of glory shall she deliver unto thee. Now, verse 10 is very heavy. It says, hear my son and receive my sayings. In the years of thy life shall be many. All right. So it says, hear and receive these sayings. And how do you hear and receive it? In the form of word and utterance. In the form of word and utterance. Okay. You're going to hear that in that form. And the more you're into this word, the more of this word is going to be distributed unto you. It's going to be given unto you. OK. And you're going to be promoted. OK. But again, it says hear, O my son and receive my sayings. Receive. You have to receive these words. We have to receive these words. And the best way to do that is, again, being into the word. Because I made the statement earlier. There's times where you could go days without reading or studying or doing a lesson. And if it comes to that point, then that's a problem. But, but hey, does it not happen? Hey, it happens to the best of us. The, hey, the scriptures say the just man falleth seven times, but he gets back up. But what I'm alluding to is those days where you actually might get home and decide to take some time just to read, do a lesson, listen to your lesson, listen to the lessons, you know, you're literally exalting wisdom. The times where you decide to cut off the flesh, do that fast that you've been intending on doing. All right. You're exalting her. OK, because this is what she subscribes. This is what she promotes. All right. And that she, again, is being likened unto this gift that that has been given unto us in the form of doctrine. OK. There was a scripture I was looking at in Malachi, the third chapter. I'm going to read it. And this is Malachi chapter 3, verse 7. Uh, yeah. Actually, let me start at verse 8. It says, Will a man rob the most high? Yep, the most high? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have ye robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. And when I read that, you know, when you go into this account here, all right, this, is act this had actually taken place in history. When you go into the time of uh, Malachi the prophet, 
And um, he, his, during his burden or his prophecy, he had prophesied around the time of, um, you know, this is after the second temple that had already been built. And Jake had um, gotten lax. You know, you read about certain scriptures in Haggai and Esther and, um, you know, in um, Ezra where, you know, we were, oh, I should say Nehemiah, Haggai and um, Ezra. When we were building the temple, it took time. People that came up against us, Jake was losing faith and didn't think that the temple was going to get done in a sufficient time. So they got lax in their lives. So when you go into this time period, you know, Jake was winging it, but they were still being whack, you know. And um, as pertaining to the priesthood, Malachi, his epistle right here is directed toward the priesthood. And this was inspired by the Heavenly Father on the message that he had given to the priesthood, you know. And um, it's pertaining to tithes and offerings right here. Because when you go into tithing, you had tithing that the nation had to give unto the Levites, you know, and even into the priests, you know, 10 percent of their fruit, substance, whatever it was, had to be given. Just as Abraham had given 10 percent of his um, his earnings that he had received in that slaughter of those kings to Melchizedek. It happens within the same fashion. But even those priests had to pay tithes and give a, a, a give an offering unto the Lord in the form of offering and sacrifice, you know. So when you look at this here and go into the history, what was taking place, Jake was lax in sacrifice. They was offering up blemished lambs. You know, it was tripping, wasn't being thankful. Jake wasn't being thankful when they were giving sacrifices. You know, it was just all whack. And it says, will a man rob the most high? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. So it was obvious the Lord was being robbed in tithes and offerings. Okay. And it says in verse 9, ye are cursed with the curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. All right, because you got the nation that's supposed to give tithes unto the priests, and the priests supposed to give offering and sacrifice unto the Lord. And they was winging it, doing whatever they wanted to, you know, doing their own thing pretty much, which is um, a strange fire at the end of the day. You know, and the Lord said, ye are cursed with the curse. And you even look at our people right now today, we see a straight reflection of the curses that the Lord had put upon us. You know, and that those curses actually led us to being destitute, you know. But even when you go into the law of tithing, you know, really you were supposed to tithe. And if you didn't tithe, you know, the Lord was sent a famine unto the land, you know. And that was part of that curse that you read about here in verse 9 of Malachi 3, of that being cursed with a curse, you know. In verse 10 says, bring ye all tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. You know, and when you go into that again, when you didn't tithe, there would be a famine. It would be a drought, wouldn't rain. The grasshopper would come, destroy the crops, so forth. You know, it was cursed with the curse, you know, and that's why when you even go into the time of the rebuilding of the temple, you know, Jerusalem was destroyed, you know. It was very destroyed, all right, because Jake was being lax, okay? And it's obvious it's happened again because Malachi is talking about, you know, the side effects of what could take place if Jake continued to be lax, you know? But when you go into this and think of it in a spiritual standpoint, understanding that if you didn't pay tithes unto the Lord, he would destroy thy crops. You know, he wouldn't open up the, the, the windows of heaven, which represents the rain to come down. But if we did pay that tenth, you know, in the form of tithes and also too with us representing priests, giving a tenth of sacrifice, what we give, which is the fruit of our lips unto the Lord, that he would open up that window. All right. Now, earlier in this lesson, I was going into wisdom and being intertwined with wisdom and making sure that you're into wisdom, being involved in wisdom, because when you're involved in wisdom and you exalt wisdom, what you're doing is you're offering a righteous sacrifice unto the Lord when you do that. Okay, when you're involved in the word, when you give him testimony, when you speak often one to another with a brother and do those things. Now, of course, when you read Malachi, the third chapter, that is going into tithes and offerings, you know, and definitely important with us to do that most definitely. You know, that's part of our culture, you know, but um, just using the scripture at the same time, going into the sacrifice that we offer up unto the Lord as well, being those priests, you know, and this really being directed to the body. The fellow, the fellow um, laborers, you know, 
and thinking of how the Lord is going to open up the windows of heaven unto us on a spiritual note. If we do offer up this righteous sacrifice and, and give unto the Lord and exalt wisdom, as the scriptures say, you know, you're going to get more understanding. A door of utterance is going to be opened unto you. Paul talks about that. You know, matter of fact, I'm going to end it off here in Colossians. This is Colossians chapter four, verse two. It says, continue in prayer and watching the same with thanksgiving. All right. And when you go into thanksgiving, thanksgiving ultimately goes back into a particular offering that we had to offer. All right. You had a, a th you had thanksgiving offering. Okay, and I believe within the Thanksgiving offerings, they consisted of um, it was a uh, a vow offering, a free will offering, and um, and then it was a Thanksgiving offering. I think, you know, I think something of that nature, Salakia, you know, but it's something within that nature. But anyway, Thanksgiving represents an offering, is where I'm getting at. So when you continue in prayer and watch in the same, all right, at the end of the day, doing the work, you're exalting wisdom when you do that. And you do it with thanksgiving, which is in the form of a sacrifice. And it says, with all praying also for us, that the Most High would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mysteries of Yahweh Shai, for which I am also in bonds. OK, so earlier I had read in Malachi, the third chapter, going into, you know, you, you paying those tithes and those offerings. All right. Unto the Lord, that tenth unto the Lord. And he's going to open up that window from heaven unto you. OK. Just thinking of it on a spiritual note, when we understand that water represents doctrine, all right, and if we offer our thanksgiving up unto the Lord, he's going to pour more unto us. He's going to open that door where you receive that utterance, and when you receive that utterance and you're filled with that word and that water, you're going to obviously pour it out. But the only way to do that is to be involved with wisdom is where I'm getting at. And when you're involved in wisdom and actually take time with your woman, with that woman, you're going to receive the benefits of her fruit. We're going to receive the benefits of her fruit. Okay. We don't want to get to the point where we're putting things before doing the work of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. You know, because we're in a season right now, especially in this season, where Satan is trying to attack on all level, setting forth hella distractions, hard to pay attention and concentrate, cutting YouTube pages off. You know, doing certain things to have you feeling like you ain't a man of the Lord already, being afflicted, so forth, you know. But as we're going through this, we want to make sure and continue to be involved with this word and be involved with wisdom. Because out of all these screwed up things that we go through, she will comfort you at the end of the day. You know, she will comfort you. Okay. Hey, the scriptures say wisdom is a comforting spirit when you read it in Wisdom of Solomon, the first chapter. And that's what she'll do. That's what this wisdom will do. All right. Once you exalt her. OK, that's why in, in Proverbs, the fourth chapter, it said that you're going to receive a uh, matter of fact. I'm going to go right back to it. It says, exalt her and she shall promote thee and she shall bring thee to honor when thou doest embrace her. All right. So the ways that you embrace her is heavily getting involved and in tune with this word. And that's how you embrace her. And she's going to give you the fruits. She's going to give you those benefits once you do that. Okay. So I'm going to end it off on that. Lord willing, this um, lesson was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone at Ruwell. Peace and blessing and much salutation to you, elect Akiam, across the four winds of this earth, kicking this word in sincerity and kicking this word in truth. Shalom.